All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to my series of Zebra 2 tutorials. This is part three and possibly part four on filters, modulation, and other sound generation and manipulation techniques. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is have a quick refresher on modulation as per the first two tutorials. So we talked about how there are these knobs here, the ellipses, and anything like that can be assigned to a modulator, and it modulates the knob to its immediate left. Uh, but you get into something really powerful called the mod matrix, and that's in the lower right. What this enables you to do is modulate parameters that, first of all, are perhaps already being modulated. So for example, let's say we have phase pulse width. We invert the phase. We have a square wave. And let's say that we assign LFO2 to modulate that pulse width. It's pulse width modulation. But then we can also use the modulation matrix by clicking target and going to oscillator one and phase. And let's say set that to velocity and increase that modulation depth. Depending on how hard I'm hitting the key, it's changing the pulse width appropriately. So this enables you to add modulators to tons of parameters. You can have two, possibly even three modulators per parameter. Usually not really many situations where you would do more than that. Yet there's even more power to be had here. There are parameters that the mod matrix lets you modulate that you can't normally modulate. So for example, detune. Let's change this to how about LFO3. Turn this up and go to target oscillator one, detune. Okay, so maybe that's not that useful. It's just like vibrato. But what if we change it to quad oscillator? Or even an 11 oscillator. And then change the speed. So again, lots of sound design possibilities, even using just one or two modulators. But here's what gets really crazy. See this via knob here? actually enables you to modulate the modulation depth. So that means if I have, let's say, mod wheel, and turn this all the way up. Uh, when the mod wheel is all the way up, the LFO3 that I have here is in full effect. If the mod wheel is down, then this LFO3 is having no effect on detune. We can even go a step further. We can have the target be, let's go to oscillator one, phase mod depth. So. And bear with me here. This means that LFO2 is modulating phase pulse width. The first slot here in the mod matrix, which is LFO3, is modulating the depth of LFO2. And then the mod wheel is in turn modulating LFO3. So it's like three steps of modulation here. And you know, you could actually set something else even to modulate the phase mod depth if you really wanted to. That's if you really want to get crazy though. So the mod matrix short uh, description is, is very powerful. You, there are 12 slots here. So you can have every parameter in Zebra modulated, and then you can have basically every parameter modulated again with the matrix. I'll show you how that can come in handy, but first I wanted to show off some of the filters in Zebra. Here in the uh, sound generation matrix, you have VCFs, and VCF is voltage controlled filter. It's a carryover from the analog days. So you have four of them, and they're all identical by default, just like the oscillators. Now they all have similar parameters in terms of the uh, filter modes. So if you click here, you get all sorts of different filters. LPs are low pass, which means the high frequencies are cut. BPs are band pass, it cuts the high and low. High pass cuts the low frequencies. BR is band reject, or it's also sometimes called notch, you can see there in the title, that cuts a slim band. So it's actually kind of like an inverted bandpass filter. EQ, I guess it's almost a misnomer because it's not really a filter, it's an equalizer. Uh, AP is all pass, but this affects the sound by um, changing certain frequencies, and it's uh, also called a phaser here. It's not going to do anything unless you increase resonance though. And last but not least, you have SR, which is new in Zebra 2.5, and that is sample rate reduction. 
So you can imagine how useful that's gonna be for glitch music, experimental. So looking at the controls on the VCF, you saw that for sample rate uh, reduction or just sample reduction, um, we have cutoff, resonance, key follow, and drive. And it's the same for just about any filter type. Cutoff is pretty self-explanatory. That's the frequency where the magic is happening. Uh, resonance is typically a boost at that frequency. So for example, Key follow means that depending on where you play MIDI notes, that will affect the cutoff. So if, let's turn it all the way up, put cutoff in the middle. That's in the middle of the keyboard or so. Okay, you can't really hear that, but um, that's actually down low enough that cutoff is very, very low. But then if you go high, it's like it's not being filtered at all. So that's the advantage of key follow, lets you make more dynamic sounds by changing the cutoff depending on where you play. Drive is usually some kind of filter saturation or uh, sort of like a tweak to the sound of the filter. So for some, it's more pronounced than others. VCF1 is pretty subtle. It's a very kind of modern, clean filter. You can hear that's emphasizing the resonance a bit. If I turn it all the way up, it's kind of making the high end a little bit more harsh, but it's pretty subtle. Now, if you go to mid drive, let's say I have a lot of resonance, increase the drive. You can hear it's boosting the mid frequencies specifically. On the other hand, if you go to a vintage two filter, which is very analog modeled, very clean, it's also kind of quiet. So I'll turn this up. You almost get like a tube saturation or distortion effect. It's not really at all like what you get with the LP Excite. Playing with all the different filter types is definitely a good thing to do if you're gonna be using Zebra because they all have very unique characteristics. Uh, if you just want really simple, subtle filters, the Excite is good, the LP12, LP6, very, very subtle low pass filters. Now, one of the interesting ones here is the format filter. This is a low pass, but instead of having resonance, it has a uh, format control. And you can hear that now the sound is almost like a synthesized voice. And if you change the vowel, which is where drive would normally be, now it's E. Now you might run into some problems here because cutoff is modulated by these two knobs. Um, that's actually kind of an exception to the rule. Uh, normally the modulator knobs modulate stuff to the immediate left. These two knobs uh, jump and they modulate cutoff. Um, but of course, that's what the mod matrix is for. So you can go to filter one, and then drive would be vowel, and resonance would be format. Uh, let's say drive. We can set, how about LFO2? I guess probably a good sound to have for a stupid pop song. But anyway. So that's uh, the basics of the filters. Um, there's really not much more to them than that. There aren't that many controls. Uh, so what I'd like to do is show how you can use just a couple oscillators and a couple filters along with the mod matrix, uh, not really even messing with the other modulators, the envelope and the LFO, to create a drum and bass sound often referred to as the Reese bass. <laughs> 